And while we're playing a game of super states, I thought it was finally time to bring Mexico, under the control of the initiative, who we hate, into the United States of North America. And so the Fusion Age military of the United States, complete with heavily armored hover tanks with directed energy weapons or coil guns or plasma, who really knows? I imagine not plasma, actually, within the atmosphere. So probably coil guns and phases and things like that have deployed to Mexico, and we will shortly... Wow, look at that capture speed. That's ridiculous. That's just a special kind of ridiculous. Public opinion remains unmoved. All right, Nero. Um, I inspired you, so you shouldn't be compromised, but I'm still very suspicious that you keep failing stuff. All right, Desolation and Melbourne will be engaging the assault carrier. This thing's got a plasma battery. This shouldn't be a problem, so I'll handle it off screen, but um, chalk up one assault carrier, I'm pretty sure, anyway. Now that is a honking large ship. Um, you can see it has to be large because it's going to accommodate whatever armies are on board. But we are closing in on it. It's relatively slow moving. As we close, we should be able to engage it better. You can see the mags and the plasma are coming out, engaging our monitor and the desolation. But we should be able to handle it. What I do need to do is close up the formation a little bit, but I think we've got this. Desolation should be able to make the kill if we get close enough. For the moment, PD is keeping up. The plasma is directing at the monitor, which is an interesting choice. Anyway, I think this fight will be fine. Because Desolation is a Melbourne-class vessel, so she's got the additional benefit of having the, the 360cm ultraviolets to engage if her PD is ever overtaxed. Not that her PD is overtaxed, she's even able to defend the Shogun at this point. As we close, our phases should become more and more effective. Basically, the armor is going to cease to be useful as we get closer and closer. We're going to padlock so that even as we do the pass, um, we always keep the front pointer towards the thing. Assault carriers do seem to have a decent amount of armor. All right, doing the close range drive by now. And you can see at these ranges, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the ultraviolets to only engage the target. not to engage uh, enemy missiles or mag rounds. Same with the ultraviolets. And yeah, I think we've got this. We're starting to put a whole bunch of damage on her. I think we're done. At 60 exotics, that was one heck of a loot pinata. Shogun Desolation and Melbourne are all damaged, but they are functional. They'll hit Ganymede in a couple of weeks. Um, as they sail in, we should be hitting another assault carrier shortly. 60 additional exotics. Jesus, how much would we get? I mean, hypothetically, that's 5.1 million cash. Um, yes, we're doing antimatter for our cash at the moment, and there's going to be even more antimatter production as soon as I solve the MC problem. Um, I've got a lot of control stations being produced right now. Once I do, I'm probably going to produce one more antimatter production station to push production to maybe 2.5, 2.6 units per month. Um, to really solve for this 5k deficit in a very serious way, plus allow us to use all the antimatter modules. But in an emergency, selling half my exotic stockpile would yield me 2.2 million cash. You can see why my plan to build utopias later on using all the cash from the space economy is going to work. Beautiful engagement. And welcome to the new United States of North America. Uh, we've still got to add Greenland, I think, just to add a little bit of block of blue up there and to throw the servants out of their little frozen outpost. Plus, there's a little bit of boost income here. But the United States of Northern America now has a population going on 600 million. Now, obviously, bringing in Mexico has significantly reduced the average GDP per capita and increased inequality. But now that the nation is together and the military is about as modern as I need it to be, I think seven is enough for the moment, um, I can focus on getting inequality back down to low and also growing the economy so that all residents of the United States of Northern America can enjoy the standard of living that ordinary United States citizens were expecting uh, in the 2030s. That'll take a little while, but the potential of this nation has now increased massively. It'll take a little while to even out the annexation. That makes a degree of sense, right? Um, but in time, we can get this number back up. A GDP per capita of 47,500 US dollars per man, woman, and child in the country 
isn't bad. It's pretty good by global standards, but I want to push this number back into the 60s or even the 70s. Wish me luck. Now the Academy may hate me, but I need to get rid of some stations in order to lower my MC cap, including my over number of uh, bodies limit. So Verse and Gatorix Base and Cell, this one, are both going to the Academy, and they consider it a fair trade in exchange for a few resources. Fine by me. That should lower my MC usage to 488, and mean I can now put some actually useful situ uh, stations rather in orbit, and also uh, plan for the production of more warships. And as a nice value-added activity, with the fleets cleared out of Ganymede for the moment, we can deploy our marines who have just arrived to assault the Wandering Star base, i.e. the base that the aliens have on Ganymede. This will make it humanity first property, not theirs. The only threat that will remain will be the Shattered Sky Station, but the Siege ships will answer this problem eventually. Once they're formed up around Earth and have cleared out some of the closer locations, I may actually build a few more in the Jovian system, with this station as the intended target. I would like the Jovian system to belong to mankind. Nice work, Marines. That's satisfying. Ganymede is now in our hands, with only the station to offend our presence here. I've started re-establishing bases on the surface. We will now defend this holding as ours. Ganymede is too rich. The yields are too great for us to abandon it. Instead, I'm going to establish more bases here build some MC and mining stations within them, and drive these resource outputs to the absolute moon. The fleet construction program that I want to commence as soon as I have better engines is intense. My demands are insane. The requirements before us are similarly insane, and so the economy will need to match. See, here's another example of a fight that should be close or even favouring the aliens. They have more combat power, and more of it is actual firepower since they only have 91.5 KPS left. But this is Hades, and this is Scourge. These are perhaps the most veteran vessels ever launched by humanity. These are the heroes of the Battle of the Jovian system, and they're not running away from a fight. Engage. By now, you know our strategy fairly well. We're going to use both ships together in a flanking pass, mutually supporting with PD. If I had enough ships to be confident in the PD either way, I'd split to both sides so we could always engage the Hydra on their weaker quarters. But they don't have that much armour anyway, we have strong forward quarters, and really what we require is good PD, so you kind of know how this is going to play out. I'm going to equalise our course at this point, and then take the vessels through in a bit of a sweep. At these ranges the missiles always look intimidating, until you remember just how good human point defence technology when boosted by laser modules happens to be. A couple of hits on Hades' forward quarter do occur, but ultimately being at close range also means that it's harder for them to evade our mag rails, and also that our phasers ignore their armour to a much greater extent. Already the enemy force is down to about half strength, and their primary firepower, that initial volley of missiles, has accomplished only the most minor damage of Hades and damage to her prow phaser array. That's something we can live without as long as one is still operational, the one on Scourge. Plus, it looks like the coils are going to be accomplishing a lot anyway. We'll try and kill the rising wave before it gets out of range. Easy enough. Repeat that on the Whispering Veil, and then it's a pursuit course after the Striking Hawk. Again, at that range, on side armour, human phaser arrays are just brutal. Let me set a pursuit course and clean this up. Hades and Scourge, ladies and gentlemen. Assault carriers are much more shall we say, chunky targets, but, you know, they get a good loot when you destroy them, so Electo and Harrow chalk up two more, giving us 46 exotics. If we were playing Operation Exodus, we'd be overjoyed. Back on Earth, I've started disbanding some of the very, very, very many armies that are now serving the European Union, because if they don't have navies, they don't really have a purpose. The US military is powerful enough to be unchallenged, and they're costing investment points, so basically I'm getting rid of some of them. Now an old friend, or at least an old class of friend, has decided to come back to Earth. This is Victor 183, a newly built mothership that has decided to come back to Tiangong orbit. We could let it destroy some of our decoy stations, but I think Battlefleet Terror is up to the task. We have the Canberra, a couple of monitors, the Drop Bear, the Darwin, the Alice Springs, and Cairns as our two Cairns class nuke ships. Sydney and Otago as Sydney and Auckland class battleships respectively. I think there's enough firepower to bring the behemoth down, so damn it, we're going to try. 
transfer and intercept Godspeed. The first engagement starts at about 1400 kilometers with the alien plasma weapons targeting the drop bear. The drop bear of course has I think like 8 meters of forward armor plating and so isn't particularly concerned. It fires its big ass Mac cannon back in response although we're entirely confident that the alien PD will be enough to handle single large shells no matter how large or how fast moving they are. In they come, not a problem at all for the alien vessel. The other ships are now starting to arrive and the first missile volleys are going out from the Cairns and the Otago. Alice Springs and the Oz Post come up the rear. Now I've got Sydney moving a little bit too quickly at this point. Uh, that's because she started behind the formation and is now catching up. So she's going to have to risk reversing her direction if she wants to be safe. So instead she's committing to a high speed flyby. She isn't the primary target so she should be okay. What I might do though is burn her off Axie and put her rear armour towards the target once she gets past the mother ship. If she does form a distraction, well actually no. We're just going to padlock, we're just going to ride right by with the front armour as our guard, serving as a vanguard PD vessel. You can see Sydney confidently slicing down the incoming with her point defence phases and the Shattered Sky start to, starts to take serious damage before the nukes are even arriving. Massed phaser fire and a couple of rounds from the drop bear put the giant thing down. The nukes never even had a chance to arrive. Checkmate. Although credit to the drop bear, I didn't expect any of those rounds to get through, but once the phasers started knocking out the point defense, that primary cannon just was devastating. Plus, it tanked an awful lot of plasma rounds, and I'm pretty sure the nose armor is like... Yeah, the nose armor integrity of the drop bear is at 98.17% after taking multiple plasma rounds from an enemy class super capital. Not bad. Barely scratch the bloody paint. That's what 8 meters of armor plating does for you. Alright, battle, you can end now. I'd like to see how many exotics I got, thank you. Come on. Hey, I just got an achievement for shooting down a mothership. Fantastic. 60 exotics. I'll take it. 438.2 exotics in stock. If we sold them all right now, we would get 9.8 million cash. Fan bloody tastic. Well done, Battlefleet Terror. Go home, refuel, rearm. There are other incoming for you to take out. But that was impressive. In particular, I'm quite happy with the performance of the drop bear. We didn't end up needing the nuke ships. Their missiles didn't even arrive. All it needed was a couple of phases to knock out the enemy PD. And then the drop bear got some solid hits. One tip I don't think I've mentioned before is if you have enough PD to deal with incoming, you can always switch your laser weapons to attack mode. Now, uh, this means that as we close in on this particular assault carrier, its colleague is already dead, um, the laser weapons will not be distracted with its mag rounds or any missiles that might be incoming. Instead, they will always focus on the hull, which should allow us to cut the thing down pretty quickly. Because as you can see, we've got enough PD to deal with the incoming. We want the laser batteries to do damage to the hull of the Vorpal Fury. All these assault carriers that we're destroying now, these things were destined for Earth. They would have gone there, but once the aliens started to lose the Jovian system, they looked at these assault carrier hulls and realized, hey, these things have a lot of firepower of exactly the kind that we need. They have a lot of armor, they have a lot of uh, like hull points essentially. They're actually pretty hard to destroy and they ended up uh, redirecting them to take out our forces in the Jovian system. Now we get to bag a bunch of these very expensive exotic heavy vessels um, for our time and spare Earth the trouble. The US military back home is probably disappointed, but you know, it is what it is. We'll just need to close in again to erode the last of the armor. Come on, Desolation. Actually, I reckon Melbourne's going to get the kill here, because Melbourne's going to pass at a closer distance. And as they get closer, the effectiveness against the armor should increase. You can see the range come down. Sub 200 meters, which means the armor is about 20% effective, and bang. With phases, far more... Well, look, phases have a lot more reach than lasers do. The early game lasers, you really need to knife fight with those. 
but still phases reward you getting in for the knife fight. Shogun took a lot of hits and will need a repair, but you know what, that's what the monitors are for. Now I want some additional real estate in Earth orbit and there's nothing quite as prestigious as the International Space Station currently controlled by the Initiative. They have built a single battle station though so we get to test our uh, firepower up against a human battle station. So far it looks like our plasma weapons of the Otago neutralize it incredibly easily. If only alien modules went that. I don't know why we're all damaged but okay the International Space Station has been neutralized sent in the Anzacs, humanity first will hold this station. Mind you, the ISS has undergone some remodeling since 2022. I don't think this is the current configuration. Something to do with the battle station that we just blew up and the fusion reactors, I don't know, something seems vaguely different. Much better. Here's an interesting development. Apparently the aliens are sick of me screwing with their fleets in the Ganymede uh, zone of operations in the Jovian system. So Victor 186, which is two motherships, is now on its way to Shattered Sky Station in low Ganymede orbit. I've set the Cairns class battleships, the nuke boats, to burn heavy for Jupiter, and I'm considering bringing the Drop Bear over as well, although its job is primarily to bombard Earth, and it's going to be a little bit slow to arrive. We have a number of battleships in the Jovian system already, but I'm considering making additional transfers from Battlefleet Terra in order to reinforce them. Maybe a couple of Auckland classes. Or maybe some more rail boats to help the missiles get through. On Earth, India consolidates Bangladesh, and our march towards a couple of super states just goes even further. Uh, we may need assistance in order to uh, join Sri Lanka to India. Uh, Sri Lanka's actually developed three mission control points, and while we have a nice little buffer now, that was my goal and I have more in construction, with the fleet and base building program we're about to embark on as soon as the next generation engines fire, um, Every little bit of MC counts, plus it's an additional 24.3 million people that we can add to the world's first country to ever cross the population of 2 billion. 2 billion people now live in India. How cool is that? All right, we've completed the choke point research. Let's see what Hans Castillo has to say. Sending ships through the Hydra wormhole is definitely out. Even if we get past the whole frontal attack on the Hydra system problem, the mass limits are far too low. Anything we send back through there has to be extraordinarily deadly in proportion to its mass. If we want to stop the Hydra from sending an endless stream of reinforcements through an endless stream of wormholes, we're going to have to take the wormhole and send something through that'll finish it for good. The only weapons that have the slightest chance of doing the job are chemical, biological, or nuclear. I feel like it's not too much of a spoiler to say that this is another point of differentiation between humanity first and the resistance. When the resistance gets to this point, and this is a spoiler, their plan becomes closing the wormhole. But on paper, I don't believe there's anything that prevents the Hydra from opening another one. We'd have to be aware forever, we'd have to be watching, plus they could come up with some other plan. But the resistance decides that it's the best approach to just shut the wormhole. Humanity first is like, well, before we close it, maybe we can send something through that will finish the fight for good, as horrifying as that concept might be. Hans Castillo does not believe in half measures. So we can now research this, you know, benignly named technology, Kill the Hive. Maximum priority, we'll finish it in July. Continuing the great history of fantastic trade deals with Project Exodus, I'm going to give them these antimatter harvester technologies because I expect he's going to build a billion of them if he's, you know, keeping to brand. In exchange, I'm going to get all of their useless metals off them because no one could possibly have any use for any of that. Love it. The demilitarization of Europe continues as we reduce the upkeep costs of the massively oversized army. So we will disband two more European divisions this turn, and we've disbanded one of the Eurasian divisions. Basically, if it doesn't have a navy, we're not keeping it, and some of the ones that do have navies, we're probably going to get rid of as well. Um, there aren't enough armies on Earth to challenge us. We really don't need all of them. So, oh, that's a moment. Fantastic. I'm going to... I'll show you those ships in a bit. Once all three have launched, we form them up into a siege flotilla, we'll have a look. Task Force Hobart has now ventured out further than any human ship well, any manned human vessel has done before, we're now orbiting a moon, or an asteroid moon, of Saturn. A place where there is an alien base, mining resources, that which we don't want them to have anymore. 
The yields look like they're mostly water and volatiles, but still, let's take it away from them. Marines, drop, drop, drop. Here they are, our first four Titan Seed ships. The Vincent R. Phoenix, the Sahiba Upendra, the Max Pichado, and the Kamiya Raje. Um, we will obviously need to build two more of these vessels because you've realized the naming scheme by now. We're going to have six Titans, one named after each of our counselors, and these are going to be the wrecking balls that go and demolish some alien stations. I actually don't know how they're going to perform against battle stations, but I'm tempted to try out the four Titans with the Otago in escort as is. I'm not sure if they have enough firepower to reliably bring down a station, but I think it's worth trying. So let's identify our first potential target. Victor 196 isn't too much of a problem, but I think everyone's old favourite base is probably for Vesta. We can get there in 4.83 weeks. Uh, if we save a whole bunch of Delta V, it'll be 5.78. I think that's a reasonable deal. So let's send the Titans to Vesta and see if we can demolish that particular base. Uh, from there, the other alternative is to transfer to somewhere that th that's then going to be able to burn easily to Jupiter. But I think that works about right. And of course now we can fire the shipyards up again for another generation of warships. Scratch the base on Saturn. I think we're pushing them further and further out. I don't see any other targets in this system at the moment. Quick check of fleets should confirm. Yep, there is no fleet threat in the area. Victor 168 is leaving the system, bailing and will be arriving with Victor 279 on, in 2042. That's a heck of a long burn that it's making. So Task Force Hobart, I think, can return to Jupiter. This time, I think Io Fortress is a better home base than Earth. So off they go, 7.202 weeks, arriving 16 July 2040. Good job, Marines. All right, we tried it with one mothership. Let's now try it with two. And this time we don't have the drop bear with us, consuming Dark Star and Shattered Dream up against basically Battlefleet Jupiter plus the two Cairns class battleships. Let's engage. Now, what's my starting formation? Messy as always. I really need to get the hang of assigning ship roles and getting my formation set up properly. But you know, it is what it is. Let's just try and bring all of the ships together. What we'll do is arrange it so that the rearward ships sort of catch up to the ones in front. And then once they have, we'll do acceleration burns. Just before they're about to catch up, we'll do acceleration burns for the ships in front. Uh, obvious point here, priority target is the consuming Dark Star. They start facing away from us because this was a pursuit. They tried to run away, we have caught them. Let's go. What I'm hoping is that even if none of our missiles get through, we have enough conventional firepower to do the job. Um, we do have a lot of phases and things like that to go along with it. But that is a lot of concentrated PD when you're talking about two motherships flying in formation. Jesus, they are large ships. Massively out tonnage anything that we have. All right, we're drifting in. The other ships are catching up. Let's equalize velocities. Well, if not equalize at velocities, at least keep relatively grouped up. The plasma is about to arrive and it's gonna hurt. Our ship should be engaging. We're gonna have to turn once we get closer. I'm gonna slow things down at this point. I can hear the missile volleys going into the air. Now the dangerous part here is going to be the turn to avoid collision if necessary. So I think a very subtle turn like that might be what the doctor ordered. We've got missiles in the air. So far our battleship armor is generally holding. I'm going to accelerate Like that. Hopefully they don't switch targets to the Scourge. Electo and Scourge together should be able to interdict the incoming. So far no one has hurt anyone basically because my armor can tank their plasma and their armor can tank my very limited supply of plasma. 
the Shogun distraction ship needs to speed up, because at the moment it's sort of hanging in the rear. You can see their PD is so far pretty easily fielding our mag rounds. I'm just hoping those mag rounds provide some sort of distraction from these missile volleys that are now streaming in. The missile bays are, I think, 50% empty at this point. Let's go for a close range pass at higher velocity. Hopefully that helps with the matter of getting things through. What I'm going to do at this point... Oh, Electo has lost its 480 centimeter. Most of the other ships haven't lost their 480s. So I'm going to make them preference engaging actual ships. That shouldn't be a collision. So instead what I have to do is turn around to get the forward armor facing again. That likewise also should not be a collision. Solid hit, missile through. Now unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to rely on the lasers to kill everyone else because the missiles were all targeted at the destroyed ship. Fantastic. I'm not sure who got the kill there, but someone did. So I think a missile got through on one and the other just got uh, pounded down by close range phaser fire from... Actually, no, Electo's gun was off, so it can't have been Electo. The eagle-eyed viewers will probably identify who got the kill there, but eventually those defences were overwhelmed. Cairns has taken some damage, but I think the missiles got through on one, um, and on the other, I think just conventional firepower did the job. Fantastic. All right, Mothership's down. And, you know, just a casual 205 exotics, you know. Easy as. The damage to the cans, let's have a look. Because I'm pretty sure she's the only ship that was badly damaged. Looks like the coil cannon offline. No structural integrity is at zero. Lithium heatsink offline, magazine offline. But generally speaking, uh, all the weapons, all the missile bays are still online. There are still nukes in the torpedo bay, so if we get into another fight, we're fine. But just basically, some damage to the front of the ship, but generally okay. Now, because there have always been some zany conspiracies about militarizing the ISS, I thought attaching a whole bunch of Marine Company barracks to the thing would be a funny idea. I'm also doing this because Marine Company barracks produce ops income. A lot of ops income. And now that we've unlocked a technology that allows us to spend up to 250 ops on a single roll by max... And considering we're going to try and coup China relatively soon, I figured fortifying our ops income was probably a good thing. If I can push this up to 500, for example, I can do two maximum effort coups or assassinations per month, or a whole bunch more of them at a lower level of commitment, like a plus 64, for example. So, the ISS is now covered in Marines. What could go wrong? And here, our objective begins to reveal itself. Kill the Hive is now complete. We have completed the Prepare the Kill the Hive objective. Most of our research on the hydropherocytes has focused on stopping or sabotaging them. A couple of teams, though, have been looking more thoroughly into how they work. Standard hydropherocyte communications are incredibly complex, with a lot of information we can't decode. However, there are certain building block ferrocytes that function as basic imperatives, similar to human fight or flight or submit reactions. Tests on ca the captive Hydra confirmed that in sufficient quantity, these ferrocytes have an overwhelming effect on behavior. We've only been able to identify and reproduce four of these ferrocytes so far, but one of them our boys has taken to calling the Huddle Ferrocyte. It causes Hydra to congregate and share ferrocytes as widely as possible. With a sufficiently strong dose, the Hydras they share it with will produce the same ferrocyte in turn, causing them to seek out other Hydras who will seek out other Hydras, and so on. Put it together with our anti-immune virus, and we've got the two halves of our whole. A weapon that will kill every Hydra it comes into contact with, and a distribution system that guarantees it'll spread as widely as possible. Wow. So as Castillo then says, well, that is it. The delivery package for what our designers have named the Shiva virus is ready. Our forces will engage the aliens at their base and provide cover, while our counselors reach the wormhole, arms the bomb, and sends it through. We're expecting heavy casualties, but all that matters is delivering the weapon, sending it through at any cost. 
We need to have a counselor assign the Omega Solution Org target the alien wormhole mo module at their primary Kuiper Belt base with the Trigger the Weapon mission. To launch the counselor and win the game, we must first fulfill the following goals. The aliens must control no more than 0% of Earth regions. Done. We're in fine condition there. No alien administration on Earth. The combined fleet power of the aliens and pro-alien factions must be no more than 20% of the total fleet power amongst all other factions in the solar system. At the moment, we've got about 40%. They've got about 60% between us. Aliens and pro-alien factions must control no more than 20% of Earth's regions. A faction controls a region when it has the executive control point in the region's nation and more than half of the total control points in that nation. So, we're at tw they're at 23%. If we throw the protectorate out of China and the surrounding areas, I think this will be achieved. So what we need to do is wear down the alien fleet, destroy some bases, build some more ships of our own. We need to throw the Protectorate out of China and their last hidey holes elsewhere. We need to continue consolidating Earth. And if we can do all three th of these things, we then apparently need to get a counselor, send them to Marke Marke, take Marke Marke. One of these bases will be the original. It might be Pike's Last Stand. It's Pike's Last Stand. We now then need to take Alien Surface Base Alpha, which is the first base they had in the solar system. This unknown facility here, I am assuming, is the wormhole, because everything else is labelled. So we need to seize this base with Marines, as I understand it, send a counsellor to this facility, and send our payload through. The idea then, of course, is that the virus will spread on the other side, and Hydra civilization will be knocked back significantly perhaps even destroyed. So that's the plan. That's the humanity first plan. We're not just going to close the wormhole and wait for the next one to open. We're going to send a package of our own through. Now I just need to figure out how to make it happen. I think consolidating Earth is significant. With the destruction of those motherships, we're at 13,000 fleet power and the aliens are now reduced to 24,569. If we can win a few more fleet battles or keep engaging in victorious fleet battles and also up the cadence of our own shipbuilding efforts, I think we should be able to outbuild the guys. And once we do that, it's about designing ships that are capable of not just fighting in Jupiter or Saturn or even at Pluto. We need to design something that can fly get to Marke Marke in a reasonable period of time and have enough fight left when it arrives to defeat whatever fleets and stations the aliens concentrate here before we land our marines at Pike's Last Stand. Easy. So Protectorate China has to go. Max is going to be the one who does the mission, That's but it's going to be a whole of team effort in order to make it possible. People like Kamya are going to have to build up our public support. That's going to be important. And then Tomi, Max, and Sahiba are basically going to have to eliminate every counselor that the Protectorate has in order to neutralize as much as possible of their control point limit. See, with 256 invested uh, ops, that's a reasonable shot. Let's see if there's anyone with lower security first. There is. So you can have a softer target. 70% chance of success. Sahiba should have better odds. Where do you need me? I'm on your side. Standing by. So he's at five with an investment of 64. That's a 91% shot. If we do this a couple of turns in a row, we should run them out of influence and essentially run their councils down to just the point where only um, the one that we have turned is available. Uh, Vincenar, meanwhile, these guys are going to hold down the home front, keep our other nations strong and together. The European Union is above five cohesion, which means it should hold together when it's merged into the Eurasian the Union, order. which puts us in a strong Getting position. And let's just make sure that public opinion in the Eurasian Union is as high as possible. I'm going to switch on unity in some of my countries in order to defend them better. Um, basically, we just don't want to lose anything now. All of our countries are in really good shape. Um, the United States of North America is slowly adapting to the integration of Mexico, but we're bringing that inequality down, getting the economy back up slowly. I will supercharge in a bit, I just want to get inequality below two first. Uh, and the unity will hold the country's political opinion together. Awesome. So we have a plan. We just have to neutralize the protectorate's 
hold on political power, and then I think we're sending Max in to arrange a change in government in Beijing. And as for the Marque Marque side of this problem of how to get out there and how to fight there, uh, we'll talk about that in a future episode, but this gives you a little bit of a clue as to what the plan might be. This giant pile of stuff up here that we're saving up, and technologies like this that we're unlocking. If we're going to go out a very long distance and take enough firepower to do the job, well, our fusion engines might be able to do the job, but I'd rather go and style on the best engines humanity can create. Let's build some antimatter drives. Now, in a baptism of fire, the Titans have arrived at Vesta. There's an alien fleet now way before we can get to the station, so we're going to engage. You can see the alien force is starting to bring a whole bunch more serious ships now, battleships, dreadnoughts, etc. They're starting to build the big stuff, but so are we. We've got range, we've got reach, <laughs> and importantly, we've got about 10 meters of forward armor plating. Plasma rounds away. First target destroyed. Okay, that's a good sign. Second target destroyed. Third target destroyed. Look at the primary cannons on those Titans. Those are the four slot heavy plasmas. PD looks like it's mostly up to the task. We might have to close the formation a little bit more. I think the Max took some hits. Mostly because our ships are not close enough to provide full mutually supporting PD. Uh, nose armor integrity is at 97.82%. <laughs> Dreadnought's down. Battleships are taking heavy, heavy damage from those incoming plasma rounds. Both the Heavy Plasma Mark III nose cannons and the Heavy Plasmas and in the hull mounts, they both have engagement ranges that are uh, very, very long range. Now, these ships are not manoeuvrable. They are not manoeuvrable at all. But that firepower combined with that forward armor protection, that's what I wanted. I think only the Max is damaged. But really, the damage is cosmetic scarring on the nose plating. They'll become available again in just a couple of minutes, and then let's send them up against the station. Let's see if they can do what they're meant to do. I have more battleships in construction at the moment, but to be honest, after that particular performance, I'm interested in Dreadnoughts and Titans. I'm loving the performance of those heavy plasma weapons. Okay, they're reforming up, and then we'll deploy them to the station. So here we go. A test of the best that human engineering can provide. Let's just keep these ships pointed forward. What I am considering, though, I could try and kill some velocity, but it's clear these ships are so unmaneuverable with the engines that they've got that that's not really even possible. So we're just going to have to destroy targets we can at a drift. The idea is, as we get closer, their weapons are going to get more dangerous. Um, given this, we probably are going to take some armor off the nose plating in the future and put it on the sides, just to allow for the fact that we're going to have to do deceleration burns. But for right now, let's see how our armoured battering rams with their 10 metres of forward armour plating do under fire. This is about as dangerous as a station can be. Um, I think this thing is basically just as many layered defence arrays as you can reasonably put in place and still have some shipyards. So, here we go. Fire is coming in, and they, of course they are targeting the max itself. Okay, I think that's Layer Defense Array 1 down. Switching target, Layer Defense Array 2. There's a lot of these, though. We've got to wear them all down. Okay, 2 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think there's 10 to go. This certainly does validate, though, that if I bring more Titans, this becomes easier. Like, if I brought twice as many Plasma Rounds, we could be clearing them twice as quickly, and the casualties would be reduced. But so far, let's just have a quick check at the Max. It's taking... Uh, max is taking through Armor Criticals, but primary weapons are all still functional. Forward Nose Armor Integrity is at 92.43%. In other words, um, 
We can afford to ditch armor. They're not ablating the armor away. They're steadily chipping through it. The armor is doing its job. So we could afford to strip maybe 80 points, maybe even more armor off the front, put it onto the sides, or... Yeah, no, we'll put it on the sides or commit to more maneuverability. Because it turns out 10 meters of armor is, is, is egregious. They don't, they're not getting through it. Now, it might be significant if our ships get closer and those lasers start getting a bonus to armor penetration. Then we might be glad that we have 10 meters of forward plating. Um, but so far, the ships are holding up all right. The Max has taken reasonably heavy damage. But I think the alien firepower is now down to maybe half of what it originally was. I'm going to try and bring the other Titans and battleships in just a little bit. Maybe they'll switch their target, but so far it's the Max that is suffering the most. Should have another layered array about to go down. Yep. So in terms of approach angle, let's engage these two next. I am annoyed every time I waste fire. Okay, unfortunately the Max has been destroyed. A genuine tragedy for all mankind. But you know what that means? It means the Super Max can be designed next. Enemy station is down to four active layered defense arrays. I think if we concentrate enough Titans or warships with these kind of weapon sets, I don't think we'll take casualties. I think it can be enough. Uh, let's just make sure you're pointing your prow there, Otago. I brought the Otago as an escort, and unfortunately it's been picked, picked on by the enemy. Hopefully what we can do is limit their firepower before we lose any more vessels. It's going to be a long burn back to Terra, but I think this is a proof of concept is relatively successful. Okay, the enemy's down to one layered defense array. Hydra station neutralized. <sighs> Rip the max. Um, we've recovered some antimatter, some exotics, etc. But the main point here is that we can now seize or destroy the station. So if I click on this force, it'll become available relatively shortly. Uh, let's just click on a random astronomical body. Take me there. Oh, the assault have is only got a 30% success chance. I could deploy the Marines, just on the off chance that we get the intel, and if it fails, then we'll destroy the HAB. This is one of the reasons why I put Elite Marines on all these Titans. You get a chance to assault the station with the Marines afterwards and possibly get some intel. So let's have a go at the assault. If it doesn't work, we'll just destroy it and then go home. I'd say that's a vindication of the design. I think there's some adjustments we now want to make. Um, the armor at the front is so powerful that it probably doesn't even need to be that thick. We can probably afford to lose 80, 90 points, reapportion it, on the sides and the rear, uh, and that's the primary design revision. Ideally, we just want to switch these things to antimatter engines. With antimatter engines, they can actually, you know, move and maneuver. As it is, they are fantastic battering rams with excellent firepower, but they they could use the benefits of a next generation technology. So the Supermax Titan has been rebalanced slightly. Now there is more armor on the sides. In fact, we may even give it a little bit more, and we can reduce the forward plating to a much more reasonable 150 or so. This, I think, should be a better balance. Able to maneuver, let's make that 11, able to maneuver a little bit more, um, a little survive a little bit better attacks on the side, but still that's a good amount of forward protection. It's still almost 10,000 tons of forward plating. Um, just out of interest, oh no, we can't change the armor in a refit, can we? You can change the armor in a refit. It would cost 144 exotics to give this thing hybrid forward protection, and with it the bonus resistance to laser damage and reduced weight, um, and much better performance characteristics, but we're not going to spend 144 exotics on this. 
So this will be the Supermax save design. And those will go into production, I believe, immediately around the new ship facilities that we've just designed around IO. So if I get a Supermax Titan and I scroll down, at IO Fortress there are a number of space works and shipyards. Those space works are capable of building, well, I've got three space works and a bunch of shipyards, uh, in 91 days, sorry, in 102 days we will finish four additional Auckland Flight 2 class battleships, three additional Supermax Titans, and then one more Supermax Titan will follow roughly a month after. And I reckon my resources can keep up with that. I may even be able to build more space works around IO. Around Earth, what's my construction capacity like? It's mostly tasked building one, two, three, four more Max Class Titans that are all due in 96 days, and two more Aucklands. The Maxes can then go immediately into refit to become Super Maxes. We'll combine that with the surviving class, and then I think we have a heck of a battering ram to start knocking out stations. I wouldn't want to have to fly the damn things to Make Maki, but they should make an absolute mess of the alien structures in the system and give us the space superiority we need to be allowed to complete our objective. Let's also have a look at that organization we gained. The Omega Solution. Okay, so all it does is give you trigger the weapon and assault enemy space asset and three administration. So it gives you nothing else. So we're going to need to pick a counselor to go into space and fly to Make Maki once we've got a ship that can do it. There we are. Until then, what I'm going to do is build up our siege forces and start knocking out alien bases. Without alien bases to build ships, well, they're in a difficult position. As it is, we've reduced their number of active mining bases from, I think, 14 to 7, realistically, plus one that's still in construction. Um, and this one here is also producing still. In terms of shipyards, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 are going to be still extant. Uh, this is number 12. Number 12 is going to be gone relatively soon. The Resonance Echo Station and Low Vesta Orbit. Anyway, let's start clearing out China. Max hits his target. Sahiba hits hers. Problem solved. And even Tomi, our astronaut, manages to eliminate hers. That, I think, should reduce... Let's see what that does to the Protectorate's control point cap. Yep, they're now comfortably over. Next turn, we'll eliminate both, and we'll also consider... see what Max's odds are if he goes into China. With them over their CP cap, it shouldn't be pretty. So apparently I'm being warned that the aliens will regard my destruction of the Resonant Echo Station in low Vesta orbit as a declaration of war. Damn it, they destroyed the Max. It's something worse than that. Now let's see where we are in the orbital cycle and where we want to send the Titans next, because the two options are basically Jupiter or Earth. I have a feeling that Jupiter is going to be a little bit out of the way. The Io Fortress would be a 12-week burn. Earth and Space Adelaide would be a 5.31 week burn where they could collect additional ships. It's just because of the orbital positioning. I think we might burn back to Earth and then consider a transfer to Jupiter from there. We could go directly to another target, but I'm not confident, so let's go home. At a maximum spend, Max has a 58% chance of staging a coup in the People's Republic of China. So of course we're going for it. We're going to increase our odds all the other ways we can. We're going to eliminate the last Protectorate counselors. They've hired two more. Well, they've hired one more. They had two already. We are going to spam public opinion. Anything we can do to get his odds up. But if we do this, I think the first part of our victory condition is probably met. We will, of course, be over control point cap. But on the 29th of July, which should, we should be pretty much at by the end of this turn, a set national policy should be able to fix that for us by uniting Eurasia and the EU. Let's go. They're flailing, but it won't help. Engage, bid, and destroy. And as we get towards the end here, Max did miss on his first attempt, but on the second one with a 74% chance, he did the job. I'll come back to Battlefleet Jupiter later. Right now, for the first time in a while, the attention is well and truly on Earth. The Protectorate has been cleared out of China. If I understand it, if I now look at my... No, I'll have to do it up here, won't I? My victory objectives... There we are. 
Alien and pro-alien factions must contain no more than 20% of the regions. They are now down to 16%, which means there's only alien fleet power that remains. We can destroy more ships, which I'm doing, and also we can build more of our own, which I'm also doing. The other thing that's about to happen in just a couple of days, on the 11th of August, Nero should complete his action. You know what, I'm actually going to auto-resolve this one because I don't want anything to distract from Nero. There we are, operational. Fantastic. Now, can we go back to Earth, please? Yes, yes, I'll order them around it. I will intercept him in a moment. Just get me to the 11th of August so I can close out my episode. This is hilarious, but... Uh, like, research literally... Research literally anything. Research... Reversed alien engineered small arms. Whatever. Just... just Mission complete. Here we are. Unification, European Union, confirm. Fantastic. Fan-freaking-tastic. That brings us down to 580 of 753 control points active, and this is the resulting nation, the Eurasian Union, with a population of more than a billion, a full democracy with advanced education standards, moderate levels of inequality, a GDP per capita of $32,000, and a total GDP of 35.3 trillion dollars. Look what we have done. From New Zealand to Britain, the Eurasian Union lives up to its name, with little bits of South, things like South Africa hanging out down there for good measure. That is an empire on which the sun probably, depending on how far it stretches on both sides, yep, I reckon that's probably an empire on which the sun never sets. Awesome. And on that note, we'll close out. We have our final objective. We've tested the max class ships. We're developing antimatter engines. We have our final objective. And Earth is being bent to our will. Join me next time for the next stage of our campaign to end the Hydra invasion forever.